JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for January the 26th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as, as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It most outperformed uh, NOC, AUD, CAT and CHF in that order while it decked out the least gains against uh, SEC and NZD. The greenback was found virtually unchanged versus uh, JPY. The strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen, combined with the weakness in the commodity linked Aussie and Looney, suggests that markets turned risk off yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU indices were a sea of red, perhaps on market chatter that uh, variants of the coronavirus are more infectious and uh, more dangerous. On Sunday, UK Health Minister um, said that uh, 77 cases of the South African variant were detected in Britain, while France, uh, in France there were talks of a third, uh, of a third uh, lockdown. On top of that, the German IFO survey showed that the nation's business uh, morale fell by, by more than anticipated in January, as the second wave of COVID infections may have slowed down Eurozone's growth engine. In the US, the Dow Jones slid 0.12%, while the S&P 500 and Nasdaq rose uh, 0.36 and 0.69% respectively, hitting fresh closing records after US President Joe Biden revealed his plan to boost manufacturing through government uh, purchases. Nasdaq was the main winner amid gains in the so-called stay-at-home stocks like Microsoft, uh, Facebook uh, and Apple, which have been in a rising mode following up bid earnings results uh, from Netflix last week. That said, investors' appetite deteriorated again during the Asian trading today, perhaps due to concerns over the timing and size of additional fiscal stimulus in the US, as Republicans, uh, as Republicans uh, seemed skeptical over Biden's $1.9 trillion proposal, noting that it is too expensive. Following the latest uh, rally in equities, with US indices continuously hitting fresh record highs, a profit-taking period appears more than normal to us, especially taking into account the aforementioned, the aforementioned concerns. However, all this doesn't mean that the vaccinations of the COVID uh, will not succeed, neither that any fiscal package in the US will not help the economy. Maybe some excitement on that front is already priced in, but we think that the uncertainty over what lies ahead um, of what lies ahead is now much uh, less than it was back in March. Eventually, we see the case for a large percentage of the global population being vaccinated, and with central banks keeping their foot on the extra loose pedal, economies around, uh, around the globe may recover. Now, with regards to the fiscal aid in the US, we believe that a democratic-controlled uh, democratic Congress will make it easier for Biden to pass uh, his agenda. Now, as for today's events, during the early European morning, we already got the UK employment report for November. The unemployment rate rose by less than anticipated, while the net change in employment showed that the economy lost less jobs uh, than projected. On top of that, average weekly earnings, both, in both including and excluding bonuses, accelerated more than forecast. Overall, the report was better than expected, but not enough to diminish chances for the Bank of England to expand its uh, quantitative easing purchases if, uh, if uh, deemed uh, necessary. 
Having said all that though, we stick to our guns that overall with the Brexit saga now taking the back seat and the Bank of England Governor, Bank of England Governor playing down the prospect of negative interest rates, the pound has the potential to perform relatively well, at least against the safe havens like the dollar and the yen which we expect to come under renewed selling interest soon due to a, support, due to a supported overall market sentiment. Later in the day, from the US, we get the Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index for January, which is expected to have risen fractionally to 89 from 88.6. The American Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories for last week is also coming out, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. As for tonight, during the Asian session Wednesday, we have Australia CPIs for the fourth quarter. Both the headline and trimmed mean year-over-year -year rates are expected to have held steady at 0.7% and 1.2% respectively. Although both rates are well below the lower end of the RBA's, uh, of the RBA's uh, target range of 2-3%, uh, unchanged deflation is unlikely to increase speculation or for further easing by this bank. After all, at its latest meeting, it noted that the Australian economic recovery is underway and that recent data have generally been better than expected. In order for officials to be tempted to add to their stimulative efforts, we believe that a disappointment in the CPIs may be needed. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.